everyone at Apple has basically been working on nothing else but this for the last year. And so it was very easy to swoosh everything else into sort of like the initial 45 minutes or so. Yeah, it worked out well because, frankly, I was interested in Apple intelligence and nothing else that they were bringing to the table. You're not looking um, forward so. to color your icons? Well, my eyes really started to glaze over during the Ubisoft portion of WWDC, <laughs> yeah, <I> um, <laughs> but then we shifted gears and got into Apple Intelligence, and that's where we're going to live for most of this episode today. So Apple Intelligence is here, and there were a bunch of different threads I found interesting as the internet was digesting all the Apple announcements on Monday. So we'll go through tweet by tweet on various aspects of WWDC in 2024. And I'll start with this note from Steven Sanofsky. This integration is so exactly right, he says, of Apple intelligence. It shows that a quote-unquote chat app was a short-term demo UI. Combine that with all the context on the OS and the privacy, and this is all how AI can really come to life the right way. Did you pick so this ben, first because you're, you're, you're a chat app hater? Um. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Honestly, well, then, well then let's get your response. You are the chat app aider. You pick a tweet that is anti-chat app. So what, what, what was your sort of uh, perspective as a newly minted sort of uh, tech expert watching WWDC? Yeah. I'm a tech guy these days locked in for the entire presentation. No, what I found striking from the Apple event was it was a vision of how this will work in normal people's lives. And it was a clearly articulated vision. Like if Siri can ingest all your old text messages and tell you what someone's address is, or if Siri no, can work across emails and that was the, and the single web. best demo was the, the woman who needed to pick up her mom and there was yeah. information scattered across text messages and email it was so relatable. Like we have all been in that situation. What time is the flight? Where was the dinner reservation? Having to sort of go across apps and just being able to find the stuff. Yeah, yeah. That like that that one demo right there was um, just because. I mean, that's sort of Apple at its best. Like super relatable problem. Here, this is how you solve it. It's like, oh yeah, of course that's how I solve it. Yeah, those are features that everyone will use. Whereas with the chatbots, it sometimes feels like people have to strain to invent use cases, at least normal people who don't work in tech and aren't programmers or anything like that. But those are features that are so convenient that everyone will use them. And watching the presentation, one of the things I was reminded of was how we were talking a couple weeks ago about the iPhone. And when the iPhone came out initially, it was an unbelievable piece of technology, this huge leap forward in capability. And then as it was updated year over year, the updates became more ho-hum and unremarkable. But you pointed out, if you step back and compare an iPhone 15 to an iPhone 8, the difference in capability and convenience is pretty massive. And, and so to go back to what Sinoski <laughs> was talking about, what? Uh, was there even an iPhone 8? Oh, no, there was no iPhone 9. There was, okay, you got lucky. I was, I was trying to oh, remember. Oh, wow. But the, iPhone, the iPhone 8 was a weird model because that was the same time they released the iPhone 10, you know, commonly referred to as iPhone X. And so that mm -hmm. was when they split to the bifurcated sort of models, but they hadn't sort of adjusted the naming yet. But there was no iPhone 9. I thought there might have been no <laughs> iPhone 8, which would have made that a very, very funny reference. Anyhow, I completely interrupted you. Sorry, continue. The, the dangers of podcasting with a, an expert historian here. Yeah, well, I, no, I, I but... was wrong. I'll take the L. <laughs> well, L's left and right these, these few weeks. But anyhow, continue. So to go back to Sinofsky's tweet, so much of the AI hype cycle started with a chatbot UI and this chatbot that had human-like responses and all that inspired these wild proclamations about what AI might be as a product. But what I saw with Apple is what AI is going to look like as a feature where there are just a bunch of different tasks that AI can streamline for people. And similar to the progression of the iPhone, there are going to be all kinds of subtle ways that AI improves what we do on a phone, and then that will build year over year and just make for a much better computing experience. 
while not necessarily radically transforming our relationship to technology or leading well, it will, to but science you, fiction. You won't, you won't notice until you sort of look backwards. Yeah, and it's not going to be the science fiction future where we're talking to agents like humans all day. I don't know. This vision, the vision that Apple articulated just feels a lot more plausible to me in the short and medium term. And maybe it will ultimately lead to a future where we're just talking to our phones all day. Um, but I came away very impressed by Apple's integration of AI into products that people use every day. And also impressed by Apple as an institution where they weren't reacting defensively and panicked. This was Apple recognizing what will actually matter to people, what will move the needle, and being able to separate the signal from the noise as far as how AI might actually be adopted by consumers on a day-to-day -day basis. So I thought they nailed it. So this is something that is both very beautiful and maybe for you sort of personally a little bit tragic. Mm. which is I know you like to think of yourself as sort of a, a unique flower. You know, you, 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 people zig, you want to zag. I am. Yeah. yeah. And, I, and unfortunately I have to say the sort of the path of going from, you know, for whatever reason I'm interested in technology, maybe it's personal interest, maybe it's my job <laughs> uh, to then sort of a couple years later being like, why does Apple do everything right and everybody does everything wrong? <laughs> they're, they're, they're like, they're, you, this is the road to Apple fanboyism that everybody goes down. I, it's not it's yeah. not a special journey, Andrew, but congratulations on, on making it down. I mean, they just did a really good job. And honestly, <laughs> one of the other things that I came away wondering is how could they get this so right? and get the iPad commercial so wrong. So the iPad commercial is <laughs> well, now maybe because all the, all, all, incredible Maybe all the me. capable people were working on AI and, no, and everybody forgot about the <laughs> iPad commercial. I mean, no, I think you're exactly right. I think Apple crushed this. And, and, and like, it is, you know, there was an aspect of, I think this was coming into focus a fair bit, you know, not to sort of overly focus on myself, but, like, you know, usually you don't want to write the article about WWC before WWC happens. But there was sort of – I just had this sense, and it's not a new sense. If you go back to my AI in the Big Five that I wrote, like, you know, back in 2023, right after ChatGP had happened, it was my first article of the year, sort of laying how I viewed the industry as a whole. It was pretty positive about Apple, saying, look, they're not going to be disrupted. They're pretty well placed here. Local inference is definitely going to be a thing that's going to be important to them. And so that was sort of the, the, the fuzzy outline of a vision that I tried to articulate much more clearly that week, this week, where it's not just that Apple – has sort of the 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 right place in the value chain to really leverage AI, but also, and I think what came through WWC, maybe I didn't put sufficiently in my article, is that Apple is just really good at this. Like they mm -hmm. they are the reason why people fall in love with Apple, the reason why they're so compelling. It goes back to sort of this Steve Jobs sort of truism, where everyone in tech is obsessed with sort of feeds and speeds. And they forget about the, the 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 experience, the look and feel of sort of using a product. And the point is not to sort of do something because you can. It's that technology will assist you in getting things done that you need to get done. And it's it's going to be it's not going to be a burden. It's not going to be something you feel compelled to do. Oh, what can I create to ask Chat GPT so I can feel like I'm in with it? It just right. it's there and it does sort of what you want to do. I think that's why you're feeling this positive reaction. I think a lot of people can feel this where in this new arena with AI, you're getting this sensation of it's not, I'm not going to say it's an iPhone moment, but it is a characteristically Apple sort of arrival on the scene where everyone's like, oh yeah, duh. Of course, that's the way stuff should work. Of course, that's yes. the way it should sort of be integrated. And, and, you know, and you add that to the fact that I think strategically speaking, owning the device is so powerful. And, and, you know, I put in my update today, it almost feels unfair in that what Apple is doing is the stuff they're proposing to do with Apple intelligence is all relatively simple. They're not doing these crazy wide ranging agentic sort of things necessarily. They're not doing like knowing all the knowledge in the world. What they're saying is, look, there is stuff that is pertinent to you. And mm -hmm. OpenAI doesn't know what that is. 
Uh, Google might know what that is. We should get to Google in a little bit, but Anthropic's not going to know what it is. All these sorts of things. Uh, even a, an entity like Facebook, like your, your email's not in Facebook, for example. Your phone is sort of the the, the point. That's, that's the hub, the, yeah. Yeah, that's the hub the, uh, around which everything organizes. Because we own the phone, we can know everything about you. And you will trust us because we have spent years and years burnishing our sort of privacy credentials you know, doing things that are arguably self-serving and hurt other people, but also is consistent with our brand and our sort of brand promise when, when it comes to things like, like, you know, ATT and privacy and sort of all those sorts of things. All the, we fought with the FBI about unlocking a phone. Like you go back to an episode like that and you realize how impactful that is on what they're doing today because they get the benefit of the doubt to say what we're going to do with AI is actually dig into every detail of your life. And we're mm -hmm. going to use that. And what we're going to do technically, and this is why technologists get really mad about Apple. What we're going to do technically is going to be relatively simple. We're not right. going to boil the ocean here. And that's where we're going to focus all our resources, all our models is, is we, we have one thing that nobody else has knowledge about you. And so we're going to do stuff that is predicated on having that knowledge. And oh, by the way, if you want to spend billions of dollars and have a gazillion NVIDIA GPUs to have knowledge of the world, okay, fine. Here's a little interface. Come plug in. You'll come in <laughs> right. on our turn. And so you end up with a situation where the iPhone is proposing to have everything from these personal models to world knowledge and Apple's investment is actually on the quote unquote easiest part of that. And then they will at open AI. Oh, come line up. Oh, by the way, it's not going to be just you. Anyone can come line up. Google. You want to come line up? Sure. Anthropic. Mm -hmm. You want to come line up meta? You want to plug into here? It's an open interface. It's there. If you want to come and get it and, or, or, or open ish, it's not, you just sign up and do it, but it's, they made very, very clear. Anyone, any big model can sort of plug in there. That's not the core of the offering. What? And so it's, it's like catnip to someone like me, not just because of the product bit, but the strategic sort of placement and leveraging of where they are in the value chain. It's, it's like the analogy I would go is with the iPhone and phone carriers, the actual mm. cost in delivering incredible sort of like internet everywhere experience are the poor saps who are out there actually putting up towers and investing in like fiber and satellites and all this sort of thing. And they all work really, really hard and sort of knock themselves over and barely earn any money in the service of Apple selling iPhones at 40% margins. Like, it, it, like if you own that user experience by delivering something delightful and nailing it, you get everyone else to serve you. And that feels like what they're doing with AI.